Welcome back friends, we have been doing business English vocabulary and we will continue to do this for a couple of more sessions. So, we have done in our last class um, a bit of vocabulary, I hope you, you are able to recall that particularly we have been doing collocation right, how words combine, join and uh, make a different and new word all together. So, um, when you say a word like and this is something that we had uh, done down and slide, down sliding. So, down is different independently, slide is different, it has a different meaning independently, but when you bring it together what happens. So, compound nouns, compound words compound uh, sorry collocation. So, these are the words, these are the kinds of vocabulary we have been looking at. Today, I also want to recap or uh, something that we have already done before and I have um, in fact suggested that uh, you should be in a in the habit of using a good dictionary. So, we will be talking a bit about dictionary skills also and uh, uh, somewhere in the middle we will do a crossword puzzle uh, word building or some exercise like that. So, coming to dictionary now um, standard dictionaries what are what are those um, Oxford advanced English language dictionary, you have Cambridge English language dictionary, you have some dictionaries which are completely devoted to the study of business English. Yes, you can you are you can find that also Cambridge has plenty of workbooks and uh, uh, exercises uh, devoted all to uh, all devoted to the development of business English and vocabulary. So, they have some advanced level English uh, uh, or business English kind of textbook and uh, of course, then other standard books are uh, uh, for example, uh, a dictionary like Macmillan's. So, these are the dictionaries that uh, I would suggest that you you know you make them part and parcel of your routine if you want to increase and add to your um, repertoire. Now, what does a typical dictionary give you? You can also go to web dictionaries, they are also extremely good, they give you a lot of information, lot of background about words, uh, nothing like a good physical dictionary in your hand, but if you are not the kind um, who likes to carry around books, then of course, web dictionaries are uh, very good as well. So, typical examples like the question was, what does a typical dictionary give you? So, um, let us look at a word like agenda, it will give you the meaning, what is a me the meaning of uh, agenda, a list of items to be discussed at a formal meeting. Sometimes we even send mails, you know this is the agenda for the meeting and we are going to have this business meeting soon and this is the agenda, these are the things that we are going to discuss. Uh, Pronunciation, pronunciation could be quite tricky, words especially English words and many English words are not exactly uh, pronounced the way they are written. This is connoisseur, connoisseur yeah, so that is the pronunciation of it, it is uh, it can be it has every possibility for mispronunciation this is entrepreneur. For example, a word like debt D E B T, it is debt. For example, a word like receipt, the P is silent. So, um, dictionary tells you how to pronounce words. Dictionary tells you what parts of speech are these words. So, you have to be, you should be able to use a word in the correct category, in the correct uh, part of speech. Yeah. So, for example, uh, a word like entrepreneur, this is a noun, but when you say entrepreneurship, then that itself become 
that itself is a, and that is also a noun entrepreneurial skills that is an adjective. So, you should be able to distinguish where to use an adjective, uh, how to use uh, the same word in the verb form or in its noun form. Um, dictionaries also give you examples of collocation. By now, you know what are collocations, right? And then of course, dictionaries give you, good dictionaries at least give you um, the origin of the words, um, how to use that word in your own sentence. So, gives, giving examples of those words, idioms and phrases. The other day we were talking about cliches, to avoid cliches and jargons. Of course, it is not always possible to avoid cliches and jargons, but uh, uh, the, if you uh, cultivate your word power, if you build up your word power, you will soon find that uh, you will be using tired words and phrases. You know, tired, tired words and phrases, thake huye shabd, jinka bahut zyada istemal ho, bahut zyada upyog ho chuka hai, unhe kehte hai cliche. Cliche, cliche, it's a French word with an accent mark on it. So, cliche, uh, those words that have been used over and over again and they are, they have become so common that by now they look almost absurd, ridiculous. Unhe paad ke hasi aati hai ke dekhiye, ye word jo hai, ye to itna purana aur gisa pita ho chuka hai. To is liye unka upyog na kare to behtar hai. Let us look at this slide now, because I have been talking so much about collocation. So, let us recap collocation. This is the way words come together or collocate. Collocation is noun, collocate is verb. Whispered softly, you can whisper loudly also, but that is the way. Shout you can't shout softly, right? Roared loudly. So, these are the terms, these are the words that go together. Roared softly, I doubt it. You play something gently and some very rude people keep things very loudly. We should not be doing that. So, place uh, any object on the desk or table gently. You grant permission, you get permission, you give permission, you receive permission, you deny permission. So, those are the collocations. You issue a denial, issued a denial. Can you say grant a denial? I doubt it. So, that is a collocation that is inappropriate. You commute to work, one can be exceptionally talented, extraordinarily talented. So, those are some common examples of collocation. Gentle breeze, destructive winds, okay, that is the way we use or we collocate words. So, next time when you use a dictionary, while looking up a word, you can put a bookmark next to it. Each time you return to a page with a mark, briefly read through it and check it if you remember it, because uh, that is the way you develop your vocabulary. See, if you come across a very good word, a sterling word for the first time. The other day, um, I came across uh, a word like culture metric. Okay, now culture metric is not something that is a very common word. Okay, but it has it is becoming quite common. There is a book written. Uh, there is a book called culture metric. So what's a culture metric? Who is a culture metric? If you th think that such kinds of words are exciting, then you liked um, them. You want to know more about them. Return to them. That's how you will add certain words to your linguistic repertoire. 
if you come across a new word interesting word see if you can make a sense uh, make any sense of it uh, by using it within the context or how the word is used and make sense of it guess its meaning then look it up see words have a life of their own you have to keep looking up words okay uh, no one can uh, unless and until someone has been doing language of you know the the job of building up a dictionary all their lives otherwise there is uh, th there will be there would be very few people who can say that they know ev each and every word that exists in the english language you have to look up you have to get, uh, revisit words if you like them and if you want to use them in your vocabulary you have to revisit them very often a word can often have more than one meaning okay you never can tell so therefore english can be quite tricky in this way a word can have more than one meaning so when you want uh, when you are interested in a word you when you find a word which is interesting read through all the meanings which are listed in the dictionary for example you can ask yourself what does a word like cliche mean hmm? what does a word like niche mean niche is also uh, a very popular word cannot call it a cliched word but it's an interesting word people often use it um, it's a higher order vocabulary a word like streamline or downsize hmm so downsize down market streamline what do these words mean what are the different meanings of the word stock when you use a word like return or revert revert what prepositions go or do not go with these is it a good idea to use re, uh, return back a book or i'll return back to you is it good is it correct you have to look it up what are the prepositions for example you should use after the word choose or surround how do you write a sentence with margin where do you use a word like marginalize okay so a dictionary will tell you all these you know answer the, all these questions i would like to uh, draw your attention to this particular word a very common word look at the slide here the word is the key word or the main word here is produce the dictionary tells us to offer to view or notice to give birth or rise to to yield to make available for public exhibition or dissemination such as uh, to provide funding for search uh, for uh, backers to produce the film you know, you produce a film producers to oversee the making of will produce their new album so the rolling stones produce their new album to cause to have existence to happen bring about to give being form shape to produce the book right make specially manufacture to compose the production has gone down so that's the way we use it here so create bring out by intellectual or physical effort to cause to accrue and in its in in, in its intransitive form these are the ways it can be used so one word and multiple ways of using it look at this slide again and here are a few sentences using the word produce the manager's remarks and suggestions produced the suburb huh? desirable results the bee sting produced 
that means caused rashes on his skin. The prosecution produced evidence. So, here produces that uh, brought forth that sealed the case against the company. A ton of rice was produced in my farm. Millions of bottles are produced every year. So, just a few examples. Now, uh, from dictionary skills, let us move on to doing to do sorry, let us move on to do idioms. So, we have done collocation and idioms. Idioms as I have been telling you over and again, um, they, they are those words expressions that add color and elegance to your vocabulary. They are not predictable, they are not usual, they are not common, they are not the kinds of words expressions that we use in our everyday speech. Okay. Um, most of the time idioms are those expressions whose meanings cannot be or are not predictable. When you say and it is a very British example, um, has not the penny dropped? That means, have not you understood it? When you say at the drop of a hat, you are not really throwing a hat, but you are what is it? What are you doing it? Uh, instantly without and when you say without batting your eyelids, that means, you are not even taking that much time as it takes to um, bat your eyelids. So, what does that mean? Uh, it means that idioms are those words, when you see a, a collection or group of words, they may not exactly uh, mean those words, okay, but taken as a whole, taken as a collection, there is a different meaning altogether. When you say a penny for your thoughts, that does not mean that you are giving a penny to somebody's thoughts. You think something and we will give you a penny, that is not. Penny for thoughts that I wonder what you are thinking, what are you thinking. So, it is a, it's an idiomatic way of expressing yourself. Business communication often involves idioms whose meanings are not easily discernible. Okay. The main context and tone of an idiom, especially if its message is positive, negative or neutral, that is what matters. So, the context matters. Again, for this also you have to read a lot and you have to cultivate the habit of looking up words. Look at this slide, particular slide, where we have given you very few examples of commonly used idioms. Tough break used when something really unfortunate happens. Example, his resignation is going to be a tough break for us. Ahead of the curve, to be ahead of everyone else. Example, the new policy will ensure that we are ahead of the curve. Back to square one, meaning to be back at the beginning. You work a lot, but something happens, something goes wrong and you are back to square one. For example, since company failed to break even, we are now back to square one. Back room deal meaning an agreement made in private. Although project was featured prominently in the news, most details were not revealed since it was a back room deal. Fall short of is to fail, we fell short of achieving our target by 1 percent. Please look at this slide, again more examples for you. To corner a market, which means to dominate a market. Example, ABC retailers have cornered the market on dairy products. You can use these expressions in any which way you want. Here are just a few examples. To take the bull by its horns is to confront something there was no other option for ABC, but to take the bull by its horns, that is to confront headlong. Get the ball rolling, get started. Today's agenda, uh, agenda was to get the ball rolling on the new project. Go the extra mile. Today's world is extremely cutthroat. You need to go the extra mile if you want to be noticed. So, what does it mean? Do some extra work go beyond the call of duty. 
I, you cannot say that you know this is exactly what you wanted me to do. I am not going to do anything more than that. My work ends here. It's a nine to five job I am paid for, so I am not going to do more than that. You have to go the extra mile in your profession. So you have to do, you you have to come up with something extra that others are more than uh, more ex, uh, something more or something extra as compared to what others are delivering. So, that is what means going the extra mile. Now, as I have been telling you, idioms do not mean that you are actually uh, looking at the exact meaning. So, go, go the extra mile does not mean that you are walking an extra mile for something. It just means you are doing some extra work. Throwing the towel is again extremely interesting. You are not throwing hat or towel or anything, but you are quitting. Learning this was difficult, uh, tough, but operating with R made me throw in the towel. That means I quit. It was not just learning, uh, it was not just difficult to learn, but also extremely difficult to operate, implement, execute. So, somebody threw in the towel to quit. It comes from uh, the game of boxing. This, uh, this is the context here. Now, uh, these are the exercises. Guess the meaning of the idiom highlighted in the sentence given. You are given options. First one, Helen was given her walking papers yesterday. A. Letter permitting to travel. B. Notice dismissing someone from a job. Which is better or which is the exact meaning? Second, the project has been given the green light. A. To be marked to be important. B. To receive approval. Continue. Number 3. Pro Bank Limited had to do some belt tightening to make up for losses from its non performing assets. A. To reduce expenses to change its interior. Number 4. Today's stock prices of the company took a nose dive as customers started panicking and withdrawing their deposits meaning A to soar high, B a huge decrease in value. Number 5, the board of directors wanted to cut corners on the project. Uh, there is a word missing here, the project I was heading you can say. A, so cut corners to give ideas, inputs to the project. B, to do the project as cheaply as possible. 6, I cannot tell you the correct estimate now, but it would be in the ballpark of 18 crore rupees. A, a rough estimate of the cost, B, to be less than that. Exercise 2.2, choose the correct words from the italicized options in the sentences given below. First, my mother is a carpenter, she is autonomous or self-employed, which is better? which is better. Second, the owners of the business empire include the founder, a few family members and some business associates or business companions, which is better. Three, Tata Steel Limited is a com public company posted or listed on a stock exchange. Number four, the decisions are made by higher people, superior. So, uh, the italicized words are higher people or superiors. Please mark that in the bro in the board of directors. Next one, exercise 2.3. Unscramble the following words largely give related to the startup world from the meanings given. Now look at the first word, and the meaning is the desire for a product by a consumer. So unscramble it. Next. This is a word and meaning is an individual who starts a business and uh, taken on the takes on the risks and rewards associated with it. It is not taken, it takes. Third, this is a word and wealth in the form of money or assets owned and made available to start a company or invest. Next, look at this word. 
one part of the company's capital equally divided that can be bought and sold. And next look at this word, a corporate move where a company buys most all of another firm, sorry, firm's ownership and assumes control over it. So, number 5, what is it? And then number 6, affluent individuals who contribute capital for startups in exchange for ownership and the like, etc. And then exercise 2.4, you are asked to match the following, look at the slide here. Venture private data exit barriers to technology and on the other hand you have a strategy, capitalist, entry, capital, equity, analytics. So, how do you collocate? Take a moment and look, understand this slide better. And then in this exercise, complete the sentences with the phrases formed in the previous exercise. You have just done an exercise. So, London is the European hotspot for Dash when it comes to fintech. Second, B, Dash will allow and you have to use the word that you have just done, uh, banks to avoid unnecessary risks as it will help as it will hold detect small and medium enterprises that prove to be potential non-performing loan candidates. There are mark, market efforts in uh, developing solutions that provide this should be marked efforts M -A -M -A -R -K -E -D, marked efforts in developing solutions that provide retailers with the ability to accept payments across all dash possible in store in app online and in AR and VR. Next one, number 4, social impact bonds represent an innovative business model that incentivizes Dash to solve public problems. Number 5, industries regulated by the government have high Dash. 6, as a startup you need to have an Dash to enable your investors to cash in on their investments as well as to safeguard the value of your startup. And let us look at the answers here. First, I will do exercise 2.4. Um, so, answer is venture capitalist, private capital, data analytics, exist, uh, exit strategy, not exist, barriers to entry and technology platforms. Please look these words up if you do not know the exact meanings of these words, expressions. And now, let us look at this these exercise, I mean sorry answers 2.1, answer to 2.1. B, first is B, Helen was given her walking papers yesterday, answer is notice dismissing someone from a job. Second, answer is B, the project has been given the green light which means to receive approval. Number three, Pro Bank Limited had to do some belt tightening to make up for losses from its non-performing assets. Answer is A to reduce expenses. Number 4 B today stock prices of the company took a nose dive that means a huge decrease in value answer is B. Look at this answer number 5 B the board of directors wanted to cut corners on the project I was heading. B to do the project as cheaply as possible and number 6 is A. I cannot tell you the correct estimate now, but it would be in the ballpark of 18 crore rupees. Answer is A, a rough estimate of the cost and number exercise uh, 2.2, look at the answers here. My mother is a carpenter, she is autonomous or self-employed, answer is self-employed. Next is not business companions, but business associates. And number 3, listed. Number 4, we do not say uh, higher people, but superiors. Of course, it goes without saying that answers or op both options are very um, close, but that is the way 
it goes you have to select only the best one and here is the answer answers to exercise 2.3 so please look at it the unscrambled words so first is demand entrepreneur capital shares acquisitions and angel investors so thank you very much uh, we will continue in the next class where we will be doing the crossword puzzle and we will start with the crossword puzzle